<clears throat> hey, welcome everybody. Hakeem Alexander here. Hypnoathletics, exercising your mind and um, getting set up in the studio to record my next show. Um, and I just want to get through this really quickly. Um, what I'm about to tell you is uh, just really has to do with... Um, just I'm learning more and more as I read and listen to um, materials from a certain organization that I've been talking about before. And uh, something that I've been attempting to, to reconcile, to put together. And you know what? It would probably even be best actually to read from these books. So for many years, I've been studying and researching from things like this, the science of getting rich. And then recently, the zeitgeist movement defined. Um, I, I almost read completely to the end of this book now. Um, and this is very interesting. I found some interesting connections. So let me, let me go to the, the zeitgeist movement defined. And on page 136, it talks about imperial war, rise of the state. So um, it says... The Neolithic Re Revolution, some 12,000 years ago, marked a pivotal turning point for human society as it transitioned us from almost exclusively living off the land, limited to the habitat's natural regeneration, to an accelerating trend of environmental control and resource manipulation. The development of agriculture and the creation of labor-easing tools was the beginning of what can be observed today, where the spectrum of the human capacity to utilize science for the alteration of the world for our advantage appears virtually unlimited. However, this initially slow technological adaptation has set in motion certain patterns and changes which have arguably generated many of the problems we recognize as all too common today. An example would be how imbalance through relative poverty and economic stratification has taken hold as an apparent consequence of this new capacity. In the words of neuroscientist and anthropologist Dr. Robert Sapolsky, quote, hunter-gatherers had thousands of wild sources of food to subsist on. Agriculture changed all that, generating an overwhelming reliance on a few dozen food sources. Agriculture allowed for the stockpiling of surplus resources and thus, inevitably, the unequal stockpiling of them, stratification of society, and the invention of classes. Thus, it has allowed for the invention of poverty. So, um, and I'm, I'm going to stop right there because I don't want to take up too much time, but I'm also now going to go into uh, the science of getting rich. And in this book... There uh, is something very interesting that he, that he says that kind of dovetails on that. Because I've been wanting to reconcile these two movements. Um, and so here's something that I found. You know, I've been reading this book. Um, I don't know if you can see that receipt there. But I, I bought, again, another copy of it. This was 2012, yeah, on, on December 23rd, 2012. And... Uh, the section, some cautions and conclusions, observations, and also oh, some cautions and concluding observations. It says, many people, people will scoff at the idea that there is an exact science of getting rich, holding the impression that the supply of wealth is limited. Um, indeed, okay, so let me start again. So many people will scoff at the, the, the idea that there is an exact science of getting rich. Holding the impression that the supply of wealth is limited, they will insist that social and governmental institutions must be changed before even any considerable number of people can acquire a competence. But this is not true. It is true that existing governments keep the masses in poverty. But this is because the masses do not think and act in the certain way. If the masses begin to move forward as suggested in this book, neither governments nor industrial systems can check them. All systems must be modified to accommodate the forward movement. If the people have the advancing mind, have faith that they can become rich and move forward with the fixed purpose to become rich, nothing can possibly keep them in poverty. Individuals may enter upon the certain way at any time and under any government, 
and make themselves rich. And when any considerable number of individuals do so under any government, they will cause the system to be so modified as to open the way for others. The more men who get rich on the competitive plane, the worse for others. The more who get rich on the creative plane, the better for others. That's very interesting because that dovetails exactly to what the Zeitgeist movement is and how these two things are merging. The, the more people who get rich on the competitive plane, the worse for others. The more people who get rich on the creative plane, the better for others. That sums it up right there. We can all have abundance without taking anything from other people. Bring everybody up to a certain standard of living. And that's where I'm going to leave it off right now. And I'm going to get into recording these ideas in this, re this show. And I'm also going to make a podcast that updates on the last one that I did that was called A Zeitgeist Train of New Thought. So thanks for watching and listening. It's Hakeem Alexander, HypnoAthletics.com, Exercising Your Mind. I'm here at uh, 99.3 KCLAFM in the heart of Hollywood, California. And uh, you'll be hearing from me and seeing some stuff from me soon. Until then, stay well.